Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be looking at what DNA profiling is and what its uses are. So we're going to start off with the uses of DNA profiling. So as you can see from this image here, we can use DNA profiling for paternity tests to identify who the father of a child is. So this one's the mother, this one's the child, and these are the three possible fathers. But you can see which one is the actual father by comparing to see who has the most matches between the child and the fathers. We also can do the same for crime scene. So this was the DNA found at the crime scene and these were the suspects. So again, you can do DNA profile in that. And the last one you can do it for is for searching for genes that can trigger diseases. Now, when we are using genetic profiles, we use introns and these are the non-coding regions of the DNA. Now, anything in a red box from this PowerPoint is taken directly from the mark scheme and you need to be aware of what that is. So the reason why we use introns is because the non-coding DNA is most likely to be different from other people. So if I was to use the exons, this is what this first point is getting at here. In most people, the genome is very similar. In most people, the coding DNA, the exons are quite similar. Um, so therefore, using coding sequences of DNA would not provide us with unique profiles. So we use non-coding or intron DNA, which contains VNTRs, STRs, or, or repeating sequences. So this stands for variable number tandem repeats and short tandem repeats. And we're going to look at what they are right now. So as you can see in this particular image here, I've got GATA that's been repeated eight times. In my sample two, I've got GATA has been, been replicated nine times within the genome. And in the bottom sample, sample three, I've this um, GATA, this short tandem repeat has been repeated 10 times. Now, a short tandem repeat is a small region of DNA between two to four base pairs that can be, be repeated between five to 15 times. So when we're using DNA profiling, we can either use short tandem repeats or we can use variable number tandem repeats. And variable number tandem repeats are similar to short tandem, re tandem repeats, except for the VNTRs are longer. So as you can see here, I've got 50 to sorry, 20 to 50 base pairs, which are repeated between 50 to 100 times. So the variable number 10 repeats are just longer pieces of DNA. So what we do with, to create a genetic or DNA profile is the first thing I need to do is take my sample of DNA, DNA and extract it. What I'm then going to do is amplify my DNA using the process of PCR, which we had a look at in a previous video. What I'm then going to do after PCR is I'm going to cut my DNA using restriction enzymes, which cut at specific areas on the DNA. Once I've cut up my DNA, I'm going to put the DNA onto a gel electrophoresis plate, which again I've covered in another video if you want to have a look at that, which will separate the DNA based upon the mass. Now, once I've done that and separated the DNA using gel electrophoresis, I'm then either going to apply a radioactive probe and visualize the DNA using x-rays, or I'm going to apply a green fluorescent protein and visualize the DNA by using UV light. And as a result, I'm going to be creating these genetic profiles, these DNA profiles, which I can then use for paternity tests, crime scene testing, or for genetic screening. So that is what DNA profiling is and how it's performed. And we've also looked at some examples of how it could be used. So guys, good luck with your exams. Remember, don't use the words it, they, amount and size. Use good scientific terminology that's going to get you as many marks as possible. And good luck.